All right, I'm gonna to try to show you guys real quick how to disassemble and reassemble the Daytona L85 kit. It is manufactured for the Army body, which is also a clone of the G&G, &G, and it should fit in the G&G &G as well. Um, so I'm just gonna get right to it. First and foremost, what I'm gonna do is on the butt plate, there's two screws back here. One right there, one right up there. Just take those out first. Sorry, the gun is kind of long, so I'm gonna probably jumping in and out of cameras or pan between both cameras quite a bit just so you can see stuff and just so I can see what I'm actually doing. So again, there's two screws. Remove those. When you take off the butt pad, the the actual uh, sling mount's gonna come with it. It's two pieces, but it's gonna come with it, so just be prepared, sling mount. All right, next up, the uh, charging handle right here. There's a screw in the center of it. Hold the charging handle when you go to do it, just otherwise it'll rotate with you. There you go. Next up, you're gonna have a rear body pin right here. Kind of just push it to the other side. Pull it out if you gotta use a punch, whatever you got to. All right, that's pretty much it to separate it. So now I'm gonna put it like so. And you're gonna basically just kind of pull the lower apart from the upper to straight back. Um, the gun is kind of long, so and be prepared. The inner barrel is gonna be going all the way through here. So just when you pull it, make sure you got a little bit of room here. So grab wherever the grip, the magwell, well, whatever you got to do. There you go. I'm gonna put the upper aside for a moment. <clears throat> all right. So now, next up that I'm gonna do is there's gonna be a screw back here. We're gonna remove the actual recoil spring in the guide rod. There's a set screw right here. Now you're going to back that out. You don't need to back it out all the way. I'm going to back it out just till it's flush with this little aluminum bracket. What that's doing is basically securing and keeping the guide rod for the recoil spring in its position. I'll just make it about flush. It's a little bit of whatever. Now watch your hand here so you don't get busted. This is the way that I've been removing it at least. I'm going to pull back the bolt, I'm going to stick my hand in between here and just try to push the recoil guide rod out through the front here. There's a hole in the front of this hop-up block. So I'm going to pull it apart, hold it, gently push. Now that it's kind of out a little bit, I've moved it, I'm going to let go gently with my hand covering the back. As you can see, the recoil spring is trying to escape. So I'm going to pull that, pull that off, and I'm just going to pull the rod out. Now that screw that I just that we just loosened, it is securing itself, holding the guide rod into that little indent in there. <clears throat> now, if you're used to an AK system, the hop-up unit has a, a slit in the top of it, as so for the air shaft to come out through the top. But I'm going to push this forward, make sure the air shaft is all the way forward, and I'm going to pull this aluminum block out right here. You're just going to basically pull up. And that's it, that's free. Now, I'm gonna grab the, I'm gonna pull back on the bolt, kind of grab it and the valve together, and just pull straight up. They're out. Separate them just so I don't damage anything. They're separated. So now you pretty much got just the body in and of itself, just kind of hanging out. All right, so this front body pin up here, that's actually holding the hop up chamber up here. Now what you can't see that I'll show you in a second is the actual hop-up chamber up here. You have a little hop-up block. It's its own separate piece. And the trigger box is its own separate piece. And this little in-between part is its own piece. Let's see if it'll show you in the camera. You can see there's some screws up here, back there. It's kind of holding all three pieces together. So the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out this hop-up block pin. Just push it. That's out. All right, so next up, we're going to remove the selector here. There's going to be a little, little hole there, an Allen wrench inside of it, or an Allen screw. Simply remove it, take it all the way out. Now behind it, there's going to be a little a screw, which will be a little pin, a little metal pin. Sometimes it's a bitch, just kind of tip the gun upside down, give some taps, that's not working. I take a remote and just gently kind of, there you go, first hit. It looks like so. I'll show you in a second. All it's doing is pretty much holding the selector in. 
So now you've got the lever still kind of engaging where the selector is. Um, pull back gently on the selector here. Mine no longer has it. It's fallen in my room somewhere. I gotta find it. But there's gonna be a actual little ball bearing that's gonna go in these little detents. Right now I've got like a little AEG rubber nub. But gently kind of just pull. Don't forget to watch for that ball bearing. There you go. Mine's high enough that the that the nub has fallen free. Yours will be a little ball bearing. And just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Here the lever's released. Just kind of do it gently. I may not look like I'm doing it gently, but just give it some wiggle wobbles. Boom, she's out. So that pin, while this is installed, is essentially being pressed down inside of here. So when you go to retighten it, don't go crazy with it, otherwise you won't be able to re rotate it, but it keeps the selector in alignment. So that's out. Next step, your trigger mechanism, when you're pulling the trigger, I'm gonna simulate it, pull in here. You're gonna see the arm move right about here. And in the back here, there's a little spring holding on. So we're gonna disconnect that spring. Just grab something and just simply, sorry, kind of have to look at this here, it's small. There you go. So just pull it, put it off to the side for now. So now that that's out, literally all you're gonna be able to do is just push the entire assembly out. So I'm gonna put my hand through the magwell, just kind of get some point of the body, grab the pop-up block, and just pull straight up. Watch the spring, it's got a little cutout in the body, just watch it as you pull it so it doesn't get snagged or anything. And boom, now this lever is gonna come with it. Oh, move it to the side, put this off the side for a second. This lever, you're gonna get a little part it's gonna look like this. It's gonna screw on here. It's just got a little screw, a little bar. All that's gonna do, it's gonna hook. It's gonna hook right in here on the unit. And when it hooks on there in the unit, it's going to, whoops, my arm came up. It's basically gonna end up moving this little metal piece right here. You can see that. When it moves that, it's gonna actually end up actuating the levers. Now, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> You can see here, if you want to, for whatever reasoning, the hop-up block can be disconnected here and here. There's two screws on either side of it right here to remove. That'll separate the hop-up block from the rest of this unit and vice versa. There's two screws right here that'll separate this middle guide piece from the rest of the block here if you needed to. So to remove the hop-up unit, there's just going to be two screws. I'm not going to take it out, um, but there's just two screws in the hop-up block. There's one right here. And there's one on the other side. And the hop-up unit only comes out one direction. The hop-up unit is going to come out this way, this direction. If you try to tap this in that way, it's not going to go anywhere. It's counterboard and there's a shoulder in there. So the whole unit needs to go out that direction. Uh, when you go to do take it out, obviously remove the feed tube first. Otherwise, when it comes back, it's going to end up hitting into the, in the little slot here in the body end. Well, you're going to be fucked and can't do anything. Now, that to the side. <clears throat> Lower receiver so people can see it. This is what the front's gonna look like. I'm not gonna take this apart either just because I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll give you a look here. So here's the, some little bracket that's gonna come with it. Um, this set screw is adjustable. The set screw being adjustable is kind of what helps uh, actuate on the trigger. In case you can't see, it's kind of what it's gonna rest on. The more you push that in, the further away the trigger's gonna be, the longer the trigger pull is gonna be. You're eventually gonna get to a point, if you push it too far, it's just not gonna work. Um, there's another piece up here in the front that goes up there. All of these screws, I've put blue Loctite on again and nothing's come through during the whole break and nothing's gotten loose or whatever. Um, can just give you some other angles at it. Should be able to see it. There's another piece now that is floating around inside of here. It is the part that holds your, on the real version would be the bolt lock, from my understanding. Hopefully you can see this. If it can't show up, I'll put a picture in it. But there's a little aluminum block right here. Basically, it's the screw that holds the, the little plate that kind of just will fill the gap on the body and hold the little guy in there. That's really it. Now, with the outer barrel, the only thing you're going to have to do to this kit is you're going to have to drill a hop-up hole and cut the outer barrel. So the outer barrel is cut here. Basically, what you're allowing the barrel to be cut for is so it can slide, it can slide all the way up inside the actual hop-up chamber here. Is there a really definitive answer of how far to cut it? Maybe, maybe not. Just keep cutting it basically until you can slide the upper receiver on. 
Um, but I will post, I don't have it with me, I will post in the, I'll probably put an annotation up here of how long my outer barrel is from, from the flash hider to the back here, just to give you a rough estimate how far to cut it. Um, other than that, you have to drill a hop-up hole. That being said, remove the charging handle here, or the charging handle. Remove the carry handle. It's got two flathead screws up here. All I do is kind of put pressure on it. Come on, guys. All right, so <clears throat> then you're gonna have a little through one of these holes, depending where yours is sitting at, you're gonna have a little Phillips head that's gonna be holding it in place there. You can use a flathead Phillips, it's kind of cut for both. Right through there. Just remove that. What that's doing is putting, let's see, a little pressure on a thing there. You're gonna have to open up. The there you go. It was basically this little pad puts pressure. One of these three holes, remember you're gonna line it. So there's where the hop up hole goes. If you're curious where it's going to go, what I recommend doing is separating the hop-up block again, separating this from the body, and sliding this all the way into the outer barrel. And the hop-up pole is going to be right here. This is where it is inside the block. So you can adjust this kit while it's together. You don't have to actually take the gun apart to, you know, assemble or readjust or hop or whatever. Convenience factor. That's a bonus if you ask me. So obviously to reassemble is going to be the complete opposite. So I'm going to slide this back on. Put these guys back. I'm just going to clamp down on it. So really, it's, for the most part, it's a drop-in. You just need to Hacksaw, chop saw, dremel, whatever you need, so whatever you want to use to cut the outer barrel to length, and drill a hop up hole. I'd imagine most people that are buying these have those capabilities at their house or at least have access to it, some variants of it. Put this aside again for right now. Body back up. And the kit here. Alright, before I go to even put it in, I'm gonna make sure the levers are on top. Just makes the install a tad bit easier than having to fuck with this lever and kind of push this down in the body. Don't want to damage any of that. So it's up to you however you want to get it out. I pretty much use needle nose for all of that. The levers are not really as gentle creatures as you all may think. That being said, that doesn't mean you go crazy with them, but you can pull on them a little bit. All right, so my levers are up. I pulled it up. They'll kind of rest up there. The auto lever will rest up as long as you put it like on the ledge here. So my lever will just stay up anyways. So here's where it gets kind of tricky here. What you need to do is get... You need to be able to get this bar inside that position. So you're going to need to get this bar inside that little arm that I showed you earlier. So I'll try to show this the best I can. <clears throat> the area is right here again. So we're going to put that bar inside of there. So I'm going to I'm probably have to get away from a close-up here for a second, but so now we're going to put this back in. There's this little spring here on the outside. Make sure that's hooked on this little back piece here. That's what you're going to need it to be. Okay. It's going to end up attaching itself to this arm here on the actual lever right here. So what I recommend is taking this. You're going to put that little silver guide rod again. That's here on the bar, and it's going to go inside this piece. Like I said, it actuates for the bars. You're going to push it in. It's going to be kind of hard to show you close, so I'm sorry. Once it's pushed all the way in it and it's actuating, hold it real tight. Watch that the spring, watch that the spring has its clearance there, and push down. And watch the guide bar just to ensure that it's, it's going to be a tight fit. I'm aware of that. Just watch that it doesn't get smashed in the body. Push down. You can see mine's kind of going now. Once it's kind of going there, just give it a good little, little push, and it'll sort of find 
There you go. Sort of found its home. So now you have to reconnect this spring to the guide bar I just showed you a second ago. Sorry, I know I keep cutting back and forth. It's kind of a bitch to show you some close-ups on certain things here. But there you go. Kind of hook it, attach it to that black bar. Boom. Now your trigger, when you pull it, you can see everything's kind of doing its thing. All right. I'm going to put the hop-up pin back just because I'm already there. Goes in from the first side, boom. Whoop, just kind of fell out. Sounds a little loose. There you go, it's in. And the next part I'm going to do is put the selector back in. So here's the selector again. Make sure the levers are up so it allows clearance for the, as long as the levers are up, it allows clearance for the selector to go all the way in. The selectors are going to end up riding in this groove here. Well, basically one of them will. Well, they both do, whatever, but one ends up pushing the lever up, the auto lever up for actuation for auto. Here's the hole. Just kind of push it in. It'll be kind of the same as it was coming out. You're going to have to give it a little, little tenderly wiggle jiggle. There you go. You're going to have to put your ball bearing down there. As I said earlier, my ball bearing uh, vanished, so I'm using just a nub for the moment while my ball bearing is on order. Whoops. Pick up and just kind of set it on your ball bearing. Hold pressure, yours is going to try to kind of come back out at you with the ball bearing. So I'm going to pick it up, grab that pin that we had earlier, and we're going to put it in that hole. That hole that's right there, it's just going to fall right inside there. Take the set screw, it keeps the pressure on the pin. Now when you're putting this set screw in, don't, uh, don't get crazy with it. The harder you tighten it down like that groove that I showed you earlier, it's just gonna, it's just gonna keep it really tight. You're not gonna be able to move it. So just kind of get to it, get it like, seems to me, get kind of like just snug gently and back off like an eighth turn or something like that. And selector's nice, good positive clicks. We're good. Now you gotta drop the levers in. Um, these are a little bit more weirder than the other ones, just as far as dropping them in. I find it easier just to kind of Hold the auto lever, if I could do this. Drop it in and hook it, and then kind of just push the auto lever over. If you want to see that they function right, move the levers. You can see it's down. That one kind of came up. There you go, sorry, now you can see this. It's reset up the sear. See the levers move. Down. Up, full auto. You want to pull the trigger moving. It won't very move much now the way it sits just because of the way it's set up. But it's actuating a little bit. Next step. <clears throat> I'm going to grab the actual oops, going to grab the valve and the bolt. So I'm going to slide the actual valve here over the air shaft first. And the easiest way I find to put this in whoops, sorry. Grab those, yes. But before that you got to grab this pin here. The pin that I said kind of helps take up some slack between the sear and the valve. There's a hole in here. If you notice when we dropped it out, inside here, towards this direction, there's a hole. I'm going to take that and push that into the hole like so. Now if you notice, it kind of came out to where the sear touches. If you tip it, see it's coming out there? So what you're going to have to do is basically hold this some way so you can slide the valve in. If you can't, the valve will not be able to valve will not be able to slide inside the hole here. It will if that pin's all the way forward. If not, you'll be able to push it all the way down. And therefore, just because basically the valve pin just basically will hit it. Just pull the valve out. I'm going to let that go for a second. I'm going to put the air shaft back on the... I'm going to put the valve back on the air shaft. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the air shaft or slide the valve, the hose in I'm going to hold it here for a second. I'm going to push the sear forward, like I was talking about. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera. Push that forward with my other hand. And I'm going to just gently tip it that way. So the pin just fell forward. Now that the pin is forward, I'll be able to just drop the assembly in. There you go. I had to let go of it. So therefore, if you look at it right now, it's kind of it's kind of catty wampus at an angle. It's because that pin is running into the valve pin, basically, and it won't allow the valve to seat all the way. So I'm going to grab that sear again in my hand, kind of tip forward a little bit, 
I'm gonna pull up on the valve. I know this is really hard to show you, but I'm gonna pull up on the valve just gently so there's no pressure on it. The pin just fell forward. I can now, boom, valve went into place. Everything is there. So now I have to install this little sweet bracket here again. It goes in the same way that it came out. This one's real simple here, this step. Just push it on down. Hey, you know what's crazy? So folks look at the camera, put it in the direction wrong. It only goes in one way. Crazy, right? Boom, look at that. There you go. <laughs> Next step, I'm gonna take the, take the recoil rod here. And there's a hole, like I said earlier when we took it out, right up here in the front. I'm going to, oh, wrong direction. Make sure you have the slotted area there. Go in first. Push that in. It's gonna go through the top hole of the bolt. It's gonna come out a little bit over here now. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna take the recoil spring and I'm gonna kind of feed it up inside the hole here. I'm gonna take this other piece, other half of it, shove it inside this block back here and slowly push the rod. As you can see, it's coming through. Now through that hole that we just fed it through, take something, doesn't matter, just give it a good, hopefully you heard that, a good push of bottoms all the way out. And it's got to bottom out because that screw we loosened earlier, we need to make sure that that's going to line up at least with the little slot in the back. Give it a good tighten. This screw, I know it's not on at the current moment, I'd put blue Loctite on it. Nothing really has come loose in this kit surprisingly. Due to the kick, the kick's actually really nice. But I don't think it's really come loose, but I'd recommend with all kits, put at least blue Loctite on those, red on the air shaft collars, bolt here, blue Loctite, if red, but at least put blue on it. Either way, tighten that. Cool, seems to be going. Take your upper receiver. You're literally going to just slide this barrel. The inner barrel right through the outer barrel. Real easy. No, oh, sliding it together actually. I'm gonna take the rear body pin. Slide it through this hole right here in the back, the upper back. And come through the other side. We have to push the body together maybe a little bit. There it goes. She's all through. Your sling plate, in case you can't figure it out, goes inside this sweet groove that's right there. Just kind of lay it in there, like so. Same way as it came off. Two screws. I find it easier to kind of get one going and then get the other one going and then before I tighten them up. Going. I'll tighten that one up a little bit. Ooh, hey. There we go. And the sling plate actually, just with a push. Actually, I tightened it a little too much, but it still moves actually. Basically, becomes lefty sling or right. Last step. Got the actual charging handle. It's going to go right there. As you go to tighten it, just hold it. Hold the axle charging handle as it starts spinning it. I've put blue Loctite on this every time so far. I'm not doing it here right now, but that's what I recommend putting on it. Tighten it. There you go. Safety, in case you're new to the system. Safe is up here. Selector again. In case you want to just do a little test, plug in some air. And that's all there is to it. Uh, if you're looking to buy a kit now, uh, Black Boots Airsoft out of uh, Canada, link in the description will be below. They're the new distributors at the current moment in time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about the video, post in the comments. As usual, I will try to respond to you. I'm on the Daytona page. There's a lot of helpful people on there. Uh, other than that, that's the uh, L85 kit for Daytona. Have a good one, guys.